Knock, knock. Hi guys. I'm Dr. Abby Waldman. I'm a dermatologist at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. And today I'm talking about five natural rosacea treatments. So what does natural mean really? By natural, I mean non-traditional. So there are so many great treatments that dermatologists or physicians can offer for rosacea. And those can include topical antibiotics, topical ivermectin that can affect mites. It can be oral antibiotics and can even be Accutane. But there are lots of non-traditional treatments that work really well. And some of these are lifestyle based, meaning changing your diet, changing things that you're coming into contact with, your skincare routine and other treatments. And if you've seen my other video on rosacea, you'll know that I personally have rosacea in addition to being a dermatologist that treats rosacea. And so I am a huge proponent of those traditional treatments as well. But especially in the last month or two, I've started really looking at other things. So I do get PDL, which is a type of pulse dye laser. I have even gotten oral antibiotics in the past um, for really short periods of time that have helped quite a bit. But I started recently really looking to see if there were any sort of more holistic or natural treatments that I could do that would help my flushing. So here's a picture from two months ago. And again, this is just a N of one. This is a random morning before I put makeup on, but you can see how bad my flushing can get. And that in the last month or two, since incorporating some of these things in my routine, that morning flushing, sort of what I wake up with, uh, has drastically reduced. Now, of course, again, I'm one person. I did made a bunch of changes at once, which is so unscientific, right? You really want to make one change and then sort of follow out and see what's due to one thing. But pretty much I made a bunch of changes at once <laughs> um, related to diet, related to things that I was putting on my skin. And so it's really hard to say which one in particular made the most significant difference, but definitely, you know, this was picture is from this morning. And again, you just have to trust me that this picture represents other mornings because otherwise you can be like, well, how do I know you didn't wake up super red three days ago? And you don't, but that this is pretty much how I've been waking up for the last month since I made some of these changes. So the first thing that I did was I started using LED light. Full disclosure, it was gifted to me, this mask. So I started using it actually more for the anti-aging effects and the pro-collagen effects. But one benefit is that I started to notice that my rosacea was improving. My redness was improving. And there, there is pretty good data for that. And so a lot of the data is more in acne, but there's some suggestion that blue light can decrease bacteria on the skin and that red light can suppress a lot of the growth factors and inflammatory markers that can lead to the signs of rosacea. So basically I try to do this every night, but I don't do it every night. I do this honestly as often as I meditate because I will put this on at night. It really freaks my husband out. It's this crazy mask. My daughter actually saw it for the first time because she couldn't fall asleep. And I saw I had it on and she came in and she's like, mom, what is that on your face? She doesn't sound like that, by the way. So this is it on, it has this red light. And so I will actually like lie there and meditate using this app. And I do that anyway, again, not every night. I do it maybe, maybe five nights a week if I am like super good and on it, but more it's like two to three times a week. So I'll put this on, it lasts about 10 minutes, which is about how long the app uh, does the meditation and I'm turning it off now just so that, but you can see it has this little on off. It turns off automatically at 10 minutes. And again, even though this is gifted, this is not sponsored. So even just doing that a few times a week, I really did notice like almost immediately I would see a reduction in the inflammation and redness. So it was enough for me to like actually keep doing it almost more than for the anti-aging effects, but that will be like an added bonus too, I guess. And so, you know, again, I really think a lot more research is needed in this. Certainly there's a lot of research to suggest that light in general can help rosacea. Most of that has been in laser. So you ask yourself, what is the difference between LED? So LED is light emitting diodes. And the difference between light emitting diodes and laser is that light emitting diodes are in the visible spectrum, meaning they will emit a wavelength that is in the spectrum that you can see basically a visible light, but more specifically around one color of light. For instance, this one has red light, right? So that is 630 nanometers to 700 nanometers. And that wavelength can actually get through not just the top epidermal part of the skin, but even into the dermis, which is where the blood vessels are and the fibers 
fibroblasts that make collagen. Those are all in that layer. And so the red light can penetrate that deep. The difference between, let's say, this red light diode and a laser, such as like a pulse dye laser, is that a laser is emitting just one wavelength. And those photons in that wavelength are going all together. So you get something that's like a beam where all of them are going the same speed, all those photons, the same speed and at the same rate, and they're all kind of going together. And so you get like a punch. Whereas the LED, the light emitting diode is emitting usually kind of a little more of a range of the color. So like red, obviously there's like a little range of red, even like, in, you know, I'm trying to find some red things here. I can't find any. Even across like, there's different, slightly different shades of red and those can kind of go across that 630 to 700 nanometers all kind of showing up as a slightly different color red. The other thing is that they are not all in that column. All the photons are not going at the same speed. They're not going at the same rate. So they're kind of just like coming at you right? It's like having tennis balls kind of throwing all across the room versus them all coming out of like one big gun all at once. So that's really the difference between a laser and these LED. So for that reason, LED is much safer, right? You're not going to accidentally like get it in your eye. Cause again, you're just kind of getting like one photon here and there. Whereas a laser is so like, that's why they say it's like a laser, right? It's on point. So you like, if you get all that energy directed at your eye, that can become problematic. If you have like a deeper laser, like let's say an ND YAG or maybe one that just targets the top layer of the skin that targets the water, like a CO2 laser. And you, you can get into trouble with that, right? Because it's like having a gun, you're like, boom and it, it can really affect the, the epidermis. Whereas the LED, it's much harder to get into trouble with it, but it probably has less of effect as well. So anyway, I think a lot more research is needed. That being said, I've been impressed with the result thus far um, to continue. So take that. So moving on to skincare. So one natural way to cover up redness is to just use the color wheel. So the opposite of red on the color wheel is green. Think Christmas, green and red. So there are lots of different products out there. The one I'm using right now is the Jane Iredale Color Correcting Serum. And you put on just a few pumps. So this is my skin without any makeup. So then it can just provide like a little bit of hiding and blending the redness underneath your makeup. Another one I've used is this green primer by Maybelline, which they sell just at the at CVS and Walgreens. And certainly in the comments, post other green makeups or green serums that you find kind of take the edge off the redness. So over that, I put on azelaic acid, which I have done for a very long time. And then I mix that with a moisturizer that is fragrance free. So again, a lot of times the best natural things you can do is not what you can add, but what you can take away from your skincare. And so going fragrance free, both in your moisturizers and skincare, as well as much overlooked, but what you wash your clothes with. So detergents should be fragrance free. You shouldn't add any fragrance to your wash because you're sleeping on that all night long. So dryer sheets are a huge culprit. Use the dryer balls instead, the roller balls, and that'll pick up some lint and it won't add any fragrance to your clothes. So I use this moisturizer by Ruddy. It's made for patients with rosacea because it has no fragrance and it has a few other things that help with redness. I just mix those together put it all over. So another holistic way to address redness with rosacea and to prevent flares is sunscreen every day. I know you're so sick of hearing me say that. Ugh. The main thing I hear from people who have rosacea is it is really hard to find a sunscreen that doesn't make their face break out. So again, the key things are you wanna find fragrance free. When you look at the ingredients list, fragrance cannot be in on there, not even at the very last thing. The other thing, most people do find that a mineral sunscreen works a little bit 
better at not breaking out their skin or not causing flares. That's not the case for everyone. I love a tinted product because it blocks some of the visible light as well as smooths over the redness and kind of hides it. And then the other thing you wanna look for but is not required are antioxidants. Antioxidants can help minimize the redness. I tend to put on a vitamin C serum, which is an antioxidant in the morning. That being said, I always find it's an added bonus if your sunscreen includes antioxidants such as vitamin C, uh, niacinamide, coenzyme Q. All of these can help reduce inflammation and redness, which is a big issue with rosacea. My product of choice currently, what I'm using is La Roche Passe Tinted Mineral 50 SPF. And again, you just wanna find a product that you are going to use every single day, whether it's raining or it's cloudy out, you wanna use it every single day. So you do have to find a product you like because this is a long-term commitment. You wanna put two fingers worth, first finger and middle finger. That is enough for your face, neck, and ears. So you can see now, these are all natural, holistic things that I did just with my skincare to already reduce a lot of the redness and irregularities related to rosacea. A little green color correcting serum, a fragrance-free moisturizer with some azelaic acid, and then a tinted mineral sunscreen no makeup on. And then my last tip for your all natural skincare routine for rosacea is again, not what you're adding, but what you're taking away. And again, just like fragrance, this last tip actually has to do with what you're taking away, what you're not doing. And that tip is to not put Vaseline or any other occlusive moisturizer over active ingredients. And by active ingredients, I mean your retinol, other prescription retinoids, um, your AHA, BHA, your exfoliant, your glycolic acid, acid, all of those, basically what the Vaseline does is it kind of traps the moisture and the heat in. And it also really makes those ingredients work extra, extra hard. And if you have rosacea, that's just gonna probably be too much for your skin. I love slugging, to be honest. I think like in the winter, it is the best. It's just like, I like weirdly love putting Vaseline on my face, especially at night right before I'm going to bed. But that being said, it just doesn't work for your skin with rosacea if you have an active ingredient on underneath that. So I'm not saying Vaseline is bad. I'm not saying Aquaphor are bad. I think they're awesome for wound healing and for skin moisturizing and all of those things. But it's an ingredient you want to avoid if you have rosacea or sensitive skin and you're using an active ingredient. So, so far we've gone over natural skincare tips for rosacea, including a tinted mineral sunscreen with antioxidants if possible, what you need to avoid in your skincare, which is fragrance and slugging. And then third is using that color wheel, that green spectrum to really minimize the redness that you have. So moving on to diet and nutrition, there has been a lot of research recently showing that rosacea can be correlated to your gut, essentially can be correlated to gluten sensitivities or to Crohn's disease or also colitis, bacterial overgrowth. And it's been long known that there are many different foods that can trigger rosacea, the most common being alcohol, caffeine, which there's no amount of money you could give me to cut out caffeine. I don't care if that was like the number one thing causing my rosacea, I'd probably still have two cups of coffee a day. Luckily, I don't think caffeine really is triggering mine, but I'm not willing to really try it. Spicy food is a common culprit. And then other ones that I hear a lot are sugar. Some people find dairy is a big trigger for their rosacea. So one change that I made in the last month that I do think actually made a big difference was cut out a lot of high processed sugar. I eat gluten-free anyway because I have celiac. I don't tend to ingest a whole lot of dairy, but I was curious to see if I could cut out some of the added sugar to my diet. So that would include desserts and ketchup and jams and things that have added sugar. And I, I do think it made a difference. I'm certainly gonna still eat ice cream on my daughter's birthday. Um, you know, I'm not being too intense and hardcore about it, but I think just really, there's a lot of data more and more coming out that this Mediterranean diet, like we're eating 
whole foods, mostly vegetables, a lot of fish, minimal processed foods, limiting sugar, really, really can help your health in a whole lot of ways, including minimizing rosacea. So that's one change that I've made, but again, everyone's different. And so you may kind of play around cutting out something for maybe about two to three weeks to see if it makes any difference and then adding it back in if that's not the case. Again, main foods are caffeine, alcohol, spicy food, dairy, gluten, sugar. And please put in the comments if there's been some other food group or something that's really, really helped your rosacea by minimizing that. And so then going back to the Mediterranean diet, another change that I have found been helpful has been adding an omega-3 fatty acid supplement. I do tend to eat a lot of fish, but that really depends on the season. We actually get like a fish share where we get to pick up some fish from Gloucester, my hometown, which is in Massachusetts. That increased the amount of omega-3 fatty acids, but in general, you can get your omega-3 fatty acids from food and it's not just wild caught fish, but can include seeds and nuts cod liver oil is very high in omega-3 fatty acids, flaxseed, chia seed, walnuts, and certainly some vegetables, eggs, and meats can also have lower levels of omega-3. That being said, I still was interested in adding a high quality wild fish based fish oil and a thousand milligrams to 1200 milligrams a day is recommended overall for omega-3 fatty acids to help skin. Most of the research in this has been related to acne because it has been shown to significantly improve acne. That being said, there are suggestions that it will also reduce inflammation related to rosacea and generally it's just good for skin, nails, hair, and, and overall health. Some other natural and holistic remedies for rosacea that I personally don't use a whole lot, but can be useful to people are simple things like using ice when you come back from a hot day and your rosacea is flaring or sitting in front of a fan actually can reduce your redness and flushing quite a bit. Rosehip oil is one I hear a lot about. There's a lot of talk about tea tree oil, which I think can probably be too irritating if you have rosacea, but rosehip oil applied when you are having a flare. A lot of patients I know with rosacea swear by this. And so I have not personally tried it as of yet. If you have tried it, please write in the comments and tell us all about your experience with rosehip oil. So hopefully this was helpful for you. I'm Dr. Abby Waldman, be well.